Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibrations and waves. The topic of this video is standing waves and harmonics, and we want to know how do you draw the standing wave diagrams for the various harmonics of a string, and how are the frequencies and wavelengths of those harmonics related. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. This animation shows a red wave traveling to the right and interfering with a blue wave that is traveling to the left and has the same frequency. We would not actually see the two waves traveling through the medium, but instead would observe the medium vibrating as a standing wave pattern, as represented here by the purple wave. A standing wave pattern is produced whenever two waves with just the right frequency are traveling in opposite directions and interfering in such a manner that there are points along the medium that are standing still and other points that are vibrating wildly. Those points that are standing still are known as nodes. They can be remembered as points of node displacement. They are formed at locations where the red wave and the blue wave interfere in a destructive manner. The points that are vibrating wildly are known as anti-nodes. They vibrate from a large positive displacement to a large negative displacement and are formed at locations where the red wave and the blue wave always construct interfere. When vibrated at just the right frequency, a rope, a string, or a wire will vibrate as a standing wave. There are a number of just right frequencies that will cause that rope, wire, or string to vibrate with a standing wave, and we refer to each of these frequencies as harmonic frequencies. The pattern of vibration of the rope is known as the harmonic wave pattern. This animation depicts a rope vibrating in its first harmonic wave pattern. Note that there's an antinode exactly in the middle of that rope for the first harmonic and there are two nodes on the end. Here is the same rope vibrating in its second harmonic with two anti-nodes and three nodes along the rope. And finally, here's the same rope vibrating in the third harmonic. Note there are three anti-nodes for the third harmonic and four nodes. We often represent these harmonics by standing wave diagrams that show the position of the rope two times per cycle, with one of those positions being when the anti node is at its maximum positive displacement and the other when the anti-node is at its maximum negative displacement. This is the standing wave diagram for the first harmonic. This is the standing wave diagram for the second harmonic and this is the standing wave diagram for the third harmonic wave that is one wavelength in length, and this is a wave that is a half of a wavelength in length. Considering this, I can look at the standing wave pattern for the first harmonic of a rope and say that within that rope there is one half of a wave there. And if the same rope vibrates as the second harmonic, I can claim that there are two one-half of a waves within that harmonic. And finally, if the same rope vibrates in the third harmonic, I can say there are three one-half of a waves within that rope. Considering this data, I can make the following claim, that the wavelength of the first harmonic is two times bigger than the wavelength of the second harmonic. In symbol form, I can say lambda subscript one is equal to two times lambda subscript two, where the subscripts refer to the harmonic number and the lambda refers to the wavelength. I can also make the claim that the wavelength of harmonic number one is three times the wavelength of harmonic number three. In symbol form, that would be lambda one equal three times lambda three. Now what we know is that the speed of a wave is independent of the frequency and the wavelength and only dependent upon the rope through which the wave is moving. So each one of these three harmonics has the same wave speed, which I can say means that if the wavelength is getting bigger as we are getting smaller as we go from harmonic one to two to three, then the frequency is getting bigger going from harmonic one to two to three, and bigger by the same factor, which leads me to make two additional claims, that the first harmonic has a frequency that must be two times smaller than the frequency of the second harmonic, or one half times the frequency of the second harmonic. In symbol form, that would be F1 equal one half times F2. And the frequency of the first harmonic must be one third the size of the frequency of the third harmonic, that is three times smaller. In symbol form, F1 equal one third times F3. 
So when it comes to the harmonics of strings, ropes, and wires, there are not only clear wave patterns, but there are also clear numerical patterns associated with those harmonics. We have already seen the wave pattern for the first, second, and third harmonic, and what we observed was that the number of antinodes in the pattern is equal to the harmonic number. So for the fourth, fifth, and sixth harmonic, we would expect there to be four, five, and six antinodes, and one additional node in each of those patterns. We also noticed on the previous slide some clear relationships between the wavelengths and the frequencies of the various harmonics. What we observed was that for the second harmonic, its wavelength is one half of the first. The third harmonic, the wavelength is one third of the first. So for the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth harmonic, we would expect to find the wavelength by taking the first harmonic and dividing by the harmonic numbers of four, five, and six, as shown here in the column of the table. For frequencies, we noticed that the second and the third harmonic had frequencies that were two and three times larger than the frequency of the first harmonic. So it would reason that for the fourth, fifth, and sixth harmonic that their frequencies would be four, five, and six times larger than the frequency of the first harmonic. And in general, the frequency of any harmonic is simply the harmonic number multiplied by the frequency of the first harmonic. To put some numerical numbers with these patterns, we could take a wavelength of 1.20 for the first harmonics for the first harmonic. To find the wavelength of the second through sixth harmonic, we would take that 1.20 and divide by the integers 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in order to get the numbers that you see in the wavelength column. And in the frequency column, if the frequency of the first harmonic was 50 hertz, the frequency of the second through sixth harmonic could be calculated by taking 50 hertz and multiplying by the integers 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, and 6 to get the numbers that you see in the frequency column. Now this is a wave pattern and if I start at the beginning and count over to here I've counted one complete wave. So this is one complete wave and one complete wave represented as a standing wave diagram. Now one complete wave contains two loops where a loop is these sections that are flashing. So that means that if one complete wave rep is represented by two loops then a single loop is equal to a half of a wavelength. So I can use this idea of a loop in order to generate generate an equation that relates the length of a rope to the wavelength of the wave pattern. So here's the first harmonic and I notice from end to end there is a loop and so a loop is equal to a half of a wavelength so I can say L equal one half of a wavelength for the first harmonic of a rope. For the second harmonic I can count two loops between one end and the other end. That distance from one end to the other end is the length of the rope so I can say length equal two halves of a wavelength. And for the third harmonic I notice three loops. I can say that the length is equal to three halves of a wavelength. Now if you look at these equations for the first, the second, and the third, you'll notice a pattern that there's a 1 over 2, a 2 over 2, and a 3 over 2 on the right side of the equation. So in general, I can state that the length is equal to n divided by 2 multiplied by the wavelength, where, the length, where L is equal to the length of the rope and n is equal to the harmonic number. If I rearrange this equation, I can generate an equation for calculating wavelength from length and the harmonic number, and that equation says wavelength is equal to 2 divided by the harmonic number multiplied by the length of the rope. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. Any one could be great next steps. The Minds on Physics mission may be your best application of the ideas in this video, the concept building is a real close second and finally here's a couple of tutorial pages that you can use to brush up on the topic when needed whatever you do I wish you the best of luck I'm Mr. H and I thank you for watching